All right, so we've, we've talked about all sorts of different components inside of the CPU, in the MIPS CPU. Let's talk about bringing them all together to create a single data path. And, and basically what that means is the root inside of the, the processor that, well, allow data to flow from one section to the other in order to do something meaningful. So what we have to do is if we're say creating a chip from scratch on an FPGA or something like that in Verilog or VHDL or one of those uh, hardware description languages, we want to assemble the data path segments and add control lines and multiplexers as needed. So we have to allow uh, information to flow along the data path and we need to have uh, control lines that are basically um, for generating signals that say do this or do that and then the multiplexers allow uh, the information to be shuttled from one way or two to another way through the data path to, to change it from uh, one data path to the next. It's a little bit like how uh, uh, tracks on a uh, on a train line or a subway line or a, uh, a streetcar line would, would shift um, in order to allow the, the train or the, the streetcar to go one direction or the other uh, in order to modify its route. So we have, we want a single cycle design that is to fetch, fetch, decode, and execute each instruction in one clock cycle. So from one, say rising edge to the next rising edge of the, the up and down tick tock of the, um, of the clock. So um, basically we want to make sure that no data path resource can be used more than once per instruction so that th this may end up requiring the, the duplication of different components in order to make sure that that data path is, is, doesn't violate that constraint. Uh, the multiplexers needed at the, uh, at the input of shared elements uh, with control lines to do the selection and we have uh, the ability to write signals to control writing to the register file or the register table or the group of registers and as well as the data memory. So once again, uh, because we have to make sure that if we're doing, say, clocking on a, on a rising edge, between that rising edge of the clock and that rising edge of the clock, we need to make sure that everything in here, all of this, gets done from there to there, okay, with time going like this. Okay, so the cycle time is determined, or the period um, of your clock is determined by the length of the longest length in terms of time of the longest path through the, um, the, the data path. Okay, so um, going over this, basically what we need to talk about is that uh, we have fetching, um, we have the registers, and we have memory access uh, within this sort of block of, of units. So we have our program counter here. We have the thing that updates generally the program counter. We have our instruction memory, which is where your program is stored. Um, then you have your register file or your register table, basically the block of registers that are um, the scratch pad basically for your, uh, your the math that's done on your processor. You've got your calculator or your arithmetic logic unit right there. You've got this sign extend um, unit right here that allows addresses stored as um, 16 value 16 bits to be converted to 32 and to be added to things that are within values that are within the register file. And then after that, over on this end right here, you've got your data memory. So that stores values that aren't being used within the register um, more permanently, or not permanently, but but they're stored far away so they can be brought in as needed. So that's where your data memory is. So you've got your instruction memory, that's one type of memory. You've got your register file, which is another type of memory. And then you've got your data memory, which is where your variables and constants and things can reside. Okay. Now, we need to add control to this. It's, it's one thing to have a bunch of wires through this. It's another to be able to say, well, this wire needs to be engaged or that needs wire needs to be engaged in order to connect different blocks within our CPU. So we have to uh, select operations to perform. And that involves maybe using the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, the register file, the register table, uh, as well as, as sort of a, a data memory, for instance. We need to control the flow of data. And that means shuttling it from one direction to the other direction using multiplexers. Um, now, your instructions, in this case, we've listed three different classes of instructions. You've got your R type instructions, your I type instructions, and your J type instructions. Um, and so what's important to point out is all of these are 32 bits. They start at zero, they end at 31. The opcode for your instruction, inside of your instructions, that's the, um, the opcode sometimes combined with funk right here. Okay, is the mnemonic that you see typically in the um, 
uh, in your assembler, what you write in assembler. And so the opcode part of it is always going to be bits um, uh, 26 through 31. So that's this right here, 26 bits, 30, uh, 26 to 31. Uh, after that, you've got, uh, let me see, so we got opcode is always bits 31 to 26 or 26 to 31. The address of the registers to be read are always specified by the uh, RS or source register field. That's bits 25 to 21, 25 to 21, there, or for the I type, there. Uh, and the uh, target register, RT fields, that's bits 20 to 16. So you see it here. Now you'll notice it's not in the jump type. Okay, or there. Uh, and then you've got your destination register, which is only available for the R type instructions. Uh, and that's bits uh, 11 through 15. Yep, RD, 11 through 15. And let me see what else. What else are we talking about here? Uh, and then for, oh yeah, and so if you've got... Um, if you've got branch, load word, or store word, the offsets are always in bits 15 through zero. This is the address offset right here, okay? Uh, and then if you're using jumps, then, then the uh, opcode is here, and your target address is 26 bits right here, where we've shaved off the bottom two bits um, to make in effectively 28 bits, but stored into 26. All right, so, the single cycle data path with the control unit. So over here is your base, it's more or less your, the, the, the things that are that make up your data path. And then you've got your control unit, okay? And your control unit is basically the thing that says, go there, or go there, or use that, or don't use that. That's what the, this is. And it is fed by uh, in the, the instructions, say right here, the instructions that's bit 31 to 26. Remember, we we're talking about bits 26 and 31, right? We got 26 and 31, op, op, and op. Okay, that is a, a, a big deal for the control unit. That's the, the, the bit combinations right there will tell the control unit what to do. Um, after that, you've got the control unit is able to control register right. It's able to control this multiplexer right here. Uh, that comes off of the second um, operand for the um, uh, from the, uh, the the register table or the register file. It's able to uh, to be combined with uh, this uh, the output from the branch uh, output right here will be combined with the zero output for the ALU into an AND, which allows us to select not the uh, PC plus four over here but some other address uh, that would be engaged in a, in a branch operation, okay, that would come from your sign extend and then would be shifted left by two. You know, that's possible as well. You've got your um, control of, uh, let me see, memory to read. So this is in terms of the data memory, uh, memory to register, which is this multiplexer right here, which controls the output of red data. So the red in the, in the past, like the verb tense in the past, read data, not read data, but read data. And um, and so that's having read the data from the data memory and shuttling it back into the right data for the register file. So it can, it can do all of these things. It can control all of these things in here uh, in order to shuttle information from one section of the CPU to the next. Let's talk about some specific examples of that. So if you've got R-type instructions, and what their data and uh, control flow are like. So for R type instructions, you've got your control unit right here. Okay, and again, it's taking uh, the instructions from bit 31 to 26 in your 32 bits uh, of instruction that come from instruction memory. All right, now, the instruction memory is also being um, broken up into its individual components, some of which get fed into the ALU control over here. The uh, control unit after having processed these instructions right here is able to uh, take control of the um, register write line right here. So it can it can control the the, the write operation within the register. Uh, let me see. We also are able to control the destination register right here, multiplexer, that would turn this branch on right here. All right. You've got as well. Let me see. What else do we have here? Um, oh, this is turned, 
the multiplexer uh, will be set on right here for the program counter will be set to zero. So it means that we're going to be updating our program counter based on PC plus four, as opposed to some other value that would come from uh, the branch that leads in, in through here with the shift left. So, so this is basically what's going on in order to sort of reconfigure the data path uh, in the CPU when we're dealing with R type instructions. Next, load words. So uh, when we're trying to load words or store words, we're loading words uh, uh, of data from the data memory into the registers, or um, you know, the opposite of this would be storing words. We're taking stuff from the registers and putting them out into the uh, general data memory. Well, in the load word case, what do we see? So we see that, again, the control unit receives its instruction, it decodes the, the, 30, the 31 through 26 bits, and says, okay, we've got a load word instruction coming in. Um, let me see, what does it do from here? Basically, it, it sends out, uh, basically, this would be, yeah, this would be a zero out of the branch line right here, which gets goes into the AND gate right here, which sends a signal into the MUX right here, which selects... Uh, the zero path, which means the next instruction that comes after this one will be PC plus four, like that. Okay, what else do we have? We have um, the register right line is engaged. We have this MUX right here that's engaged to zero. So that means um, that um, it's going to uh, send, let me see, it's going to send the instruction bits 20, I can't read that right there, to 16 um, through here. All right, what else do we have? We have, um, let me see, the ALU source. The source here, it will select this input path right here, which is from the sign extend, which comes over here. So we're taking a 16-bit value, conver converting it to 32 feeding it through here and then feeding it into the ALU. So we got that register going in here. We've get, we're going to be uh, combining it through the ALU with a value um, from here. The ALU is controlled there. What else do we have? We have this over here. So the red data line means that we will be taking data out of data memory and shuttling it back in here, which actually makes a whole lot of sense because what we were trying to do is load uh, data from the data memory in the first place. So basically the end result is going to be that we're going to read data from the data memory and then we will shuttle it back into the register file uh, at the address that was specified. What else do we have? We have branch instructions. So branch instructions, again, uh, there's going to be a decoding right here of uh, bits 31 through 26, and that will engage the control unit again, because we always have to, we're basically always engaging the control unit. And let me see. So we're going to, let's see, we're doing a branch. So that's going to engage. We're going to get into this AND gate right here. The AND gate is also fed by the zero output from the ALU. Now, if we, for instance, have a branch on equal, you should have a uh, zero that comes out of the ALU because it's looking for the difference between two numbers, which means zero difference is, is uh, um, means it's equal. And uh, so we get, we get two signals going into this AND gate right here. That would engage a one right here which would mean that we would receive, let's see, we would receive a combination of the PC plus four address plus the shifted left by two information, the address that is sign extended. So we're going from a 16 bit value to a converted to 32 bit value so that we're adding uh, two 32 bit values together in this adder right here. Uh, and that comes from instruction uh, component uh, bits uh, 15 through zero in the instruction. Okay, that comes that comes from there. So so that's that's a branch right there as well. Okay, so we got our branch right there, and then basically that will uh, that will feed back into that combination, that addition of the old PC plus four plus the shifted by left two 
uh, bits 15 through 0 added together will be fed back into the program counter and give the program counter a brand new value. Finally, the last one here is the jump operation. So let me see what does happen. What happens in the jump operation? We have again we have the instruction that comes. Part of it comes up as bits 31 through 26 goes into the control unit. So you get your control unit right here. Your control unit. Let me see. This is jump. Ah, there we go. Oh look, we've got extra components in here that aren't that aren't used in any of the other um, instructions really. So we get this jump operation. Uh, or wire that comes out. So this is sort of the, the wire that does the control on the MUX. This is a new MUX that wasn't shown in the uh, other illustrations. This MUX right here, which would normally be set to allow, it'd be set to zero and would allow the program counter to be updated using the output of, of sort of this business right here, which we talked about earlier. Um, the, the MUX would go to one, which would allow data come in fr through this path the output of that, the result of that will get fed back into the program counter right here, like that. Whoops, let's do that again, like this. It gets fed into the program counter like that, and, and that will go to the next location in memory after the jump. But what is this? This is basically, uh, if we go back through the MUX, we go back up here, it's a 32-bit value. Where does the 32-bit value come from? It comes from PC plus 4, so we got a, a value of the old PC, we've added four to it. So the old program counter, we added four to it. That comes over here. And that will form for the address, we're going to bits 31 through 28 right here. All right, that leaves bits zero through 27 uh, that need to be filled in. And that comes from over here. So basically we've got so the, the end result is going to be 32 bits. The first um, 28 bits right here, the bottom 28 bits come from a left shifted by two operation that was done to a 26 bit number. That 26 bit number came from the instruction, the, the, the instruction, the jump instruction, the bottom 26 bits of the jump instruction. <clears throat> are converted into a 28-bit value address doing a shift left by two. And, and again, the reason for that shift from 26 bits to 28 bits is because the bottom two bits, which represent four memory addresses where the addresses are in terms of eight bits or one byte or four bytes in 32 bits, okay? The bottom 26 bits become 28 bits through the shift left that's combined with the program counter plus four, which form 30 bits 31 through 28 to make a 32 bit number, which is then combined together and fed back into the program counter there to give us the address that we jump to next. That in a nutshell is um, how we've put together some data paths and, and how they, they operate on these different instructions. Mm -hmm.